Hey YouTube, it's Aiden Slash Burger Bob here to do a Thayer valve disassembly and reassembly. I don't know how I haven't done a video about this yet. Um, I guess I've just kind of spaced it because I've made rotor valve ones and I talked about true bores and stuff, but not about Thayer's. Um, this one is actually in pretty good shape right now. I just took these apart uh, maybe a week ago, not even a week ago. So they're actually okay, but I think I may have not done the best oil job on my second valve, so we're gonna take it apart for you guys. Um, first, we have to start by taking things apart. First thing on a horn like this is to take the tuning slide out. There we go. Set that aside, you're not gonna need it for a while. Um, and then on this horn, and this is different on every horn, of course, shires and stuff. Uh, Edwards have like little uh, twist locks. This has just uh, these guys. You gotta take off the bell, nice and easy. There's usually a better angle to do this. It's kind of hard to do on camera. Take the bell off. We can set that aside. We don't need that for a while. <clears throat> then we just have the bell or the valve section. And of course, this is also going to be different for every instrument. Um, you know, not every instrument, but a lot of them are going to be have different uh, setups. So I'll show you how this one goes. Um, I have to take out the F valve. Oh, there's some water coming out of the valves. Yeah, there's some more. Good. I have to take out the F valve. Notice how I'm pushing down. There we go. Notice how I'm pushing down the valve to push this or to pull this out. Because that's how you want to do it. Take that out nice and easy. You want to put this down somewhere where it's not going to like get a bunch of stuff on it because it has slide grease on it. Um, this desk is pretty clean, so it's probably okay just setting it down. Cool, I got that out. Now that I've got that out, um, the way this valve section goes together is there's one screw right here that goes across a brace. And uh, I have to take that out to take these valves apart. So I just give this a little twist. And this is a thumb screw so I can actually take it out myself, which is pretty handy. This is gonna be a lot different than like a Shars or Edwards because this is a custom setup. Let's not lose that screw. Um, okay, so I got these apart and now these are loose. This part is a lot different than Shars and Edwards because those usually have a way to keep this together that's actually like a clamp or something. Edwards have a clamp, I don't know what Shires have. I'm not sure how they stay together. Um, but this only has this screw. This is actually loose. And so you'll notice I can't actually take this apart yet because I still have the levers connected to the valve. So we have to pop those off. Um, this is also going to be way different on a Shires Edwards. These are plastic mini balls, so they just have like a little plastic cup on a steel mini ball. Um, so these are pretty easy to take apart. And this just slides off on this instrument. Ta da! And you also have to take off this mini ball. Uh, I want to do that without breaking it because you really don't want to break these and have to get new ones. That's not fun at all. Cool, so valves are apart now. The valves are separate from each other. I wouldn't say apart, maybe. I'm going to do this one first because this is the one that needs um, the actual attention today. I'm going to do both, I guess, but this is the one that actually needs the help. So you'll notice there's already a bunch of like water, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, that fell out of the valves um, when I took it apart. That's pretty common. Uh, on this horn, I think water likes to get stuck right here on this instrument, and I think a little bit on the F valve too. So when I take it out of the case and I move the valves, um, water comes out of them. Just so you know. And I think that happens on most wraps probably. So. On rotor valves, obviously the valve comes apart <clears throat> this way. On um, these, it comes apart this way. So we have a lock ring that is just like the the valve cap. Basically, this is what keeps everything together. So we loosen this. It's loose now. Now um, on this valve in particular, this is going to be totally different than um, Shires or Edwards. Um, this just slips out. So I'm going to put my hand here. And my hand here. And ta-da, this came apart. And on these stairs in particular, um, water likes to just build up inside the valve because there's nowhere for it to go really. 
Um, so when I take them apart, lots of lots of water comes out. We'll put that aside. Um, I'll tell you guys the tools we need as we go, I guess. Obviously, number one, a screwdriver that fits all the screws that you have here. For me, I literally only have one, one screw that I need this for, so it's just a flathead. Um, it's also got Phillips, but I don't need that for anything. So we got valve. What do we do with this? Well, I use just a nice um, lint-free cloth. I think these are like literally cut from crappy t-shirts or something, but I got them at a hardware store. And I just kind of wipe this down. You can give these a better cleaning um, by using like vinegar or something. Um, I would recommend not doing anything else unless you really need to. There's some, uh, there's usually some buildup of like oil, um, what's the other stuff? Slide grease from your tuning slides likes to drip down and get into your valves. That's what really slows them down, I think. And so you're just trying to get all that off. It looks pretty clean now. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's nice and shiny pretty much everywhere. And of course, this is only one of the bearing surfaces on a Thayer valve. This guy right here, just the tip of the cone is what touches the inside of this. So the rest of this can get dirty and it kind of doesn't matter unless there's a ton of stuff on it. But this is really what matters. But also you have a giant bearing surface um, between the core and the back plate. Boop. And you can't see it of course, but there's a little, there's a little gap right here. Um, I don't know how to put this, but on most, most stairs, and it should be the case on these, you can unscrew this screw right here, if you guys can see that. You can take this out, take off the stop arm, and then you can take the core off, and it'll be totally separate. On mine, um, the way the stop arms go on, they are super, super, super hard to get off, and I actually had Ben shim them. Well, Ben's my tech. I had them him shim them. He put a little bit of paper in so the stop arm won't come off because they were either super loose or super tight. And now I'm just going to make them tight. They don't come off. Thankfully, I have a little wiggle room. If I press up on the screw, I can get into this gap right here between the core and the back plate. And to clean that, I use a McDonald's napkin. And I just get the large side here and I just wipe all the way around because this side is going to get really dirty and slow down your valve on a Thayer. And of course other valves might be different. I think Edwards axials have a little bit of a different build and maybe they don't have this huge surface area but I'm pretty sure that most of them do. And of course the new ball bearing Olsen axials are going to be totally different. I like to blow that out just in case there's any um, like lint and stuff from this. Cool, so now we have a clean, quote unquote, and there's still stuff in here, but there's not a lot. Now we have a clean valve. Put that down for a second. I got my little camouflage grenade pouch. This actually is a grenade pouch. I got slide grease. Got slide stuff, we're not gonna need that today. We got uh, my ball bearing stuff. We'll get to that in a bit. We got valve oil. I use Ultra Pure for this stuff now, because it's just a little bit better for these kind of things. Cool, so let's get this out, unscrew it. <clears throat> and now we just wanna put oil everywhere. Whoa, 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 hold up. I'm wrong, we want, also wanna clean this out. I've made this mistake way too many times where I oil the core and then I forget that I haven't cleaned this out. So do the same thing here. Just get out all the stuff you can see. And of course, like I said, the only place that the inside core touches here is only on the very tip, so you see on the inside of this, there's a ring on the inside. That's the only place the valve actually touches on this side of the valve. So you really wanna make sure that in particular is clean. Um, there we go, that looks like everything. A little bit of water. Um, sometimes stuff likes to leak down these um, ports for the valve, so you kinda of wanna get around those, make sure there's no like slide grease or other nasties. There we go, that's clean now. Cool. Let's, I never remember the best order for this because I don't do this quite often enough. We're gonna oil the valve by putting some oil between this gap and press it down. Ooh, got a little bit out there. I put some oil in the port because you can see the bearing surface here and then I kind of move it around. Make sure that oil is everywhere. 
Um, this surface, of course, the back plate to the core is the most important because there's just so much surface area there. Get a little more in there just in case. You can, I guess, over oil a Thayer, but it would be pretty, pretty difficult to do that. Um, they need the oil to um, seal. If the oil's not there, they're not going to seal. They're going to play a lot worse. And then I put a little oil on the surface inside the core. <clears throat> and then we wind it all back up again. Nice and easy. Put it on there. Make sure everything is square and not one side is farther than the other. Not that it's easy to do that. Get that lock ring lined up again. Again, make sure everything is square. Get this down nice and not too tight. You don't want to use like a whole lot of force tightening this down. Um, this, of course, if you over tighten it, the valve will not move because it's pressing too far against the other side. Um, let's move that out of the way. So there's another bearing point right here. If you put oil in here, you'll make sure that the there's like a you know there's like a rod coming out of the back of the valve and there's a hole in the back plate. Um, there's some friction there, so if you put oil in there, you can make sure that's not part of the problem. And move around a little bit. Looks good to me. If you look down this, you can see the oil um, on the other surface. Boom! This valve is done. Cool, let's do the other one because this one is slightly different um, disassembly wise. So this one might kind of look confusing. This tube just coming out of the back of this, right? How does this work? So carefully unscrew this. I'm holding it this direction, you may notice. And we'll see why in a second. Unscrew this. This one actually comes all the way off. Playing a, a surgery, whatever that game is. I can't remember. And then this is where it gets confusing. Ta-da, the whole thing just comes out. And if you hold this at a different angle, it might fall to the side and get some friction that you don't really want against the valves. Put down the other side, and then we get to the core. This one has more water on it. I'm not sure why, but let's get all that off. Usually I find a fair amount of like tuning side grease on the second valve, and this one usually has more water. Get all that off. I don't know if you can see it on this, but there's a little mark where the um, valve port lies when the valve is closed. Um, when it's, I guess, open, when it, you're not using the valve, this is where that port lies, and it eventually kind of leaves a little mark. I'm not sure if that went away when I used vinegar and it came back. I'll have to check. It's cool. So I got that, and again, I can't take the valve off of the back plate because my stop arms are too tight, so I pop it out, use this McDonald's napkin. The problem is um, my valves have a lot of room if I hit, pop it back like that. My valves have a lot of room because of the way they were worked on um, to do this. So I can fit a napkin in here and clean this. Um, maybe a new valve, something that's maybe better built, will not have that room. And you will not be able to clean the back plate. And that's, that's when you need to go to a tech and just have them do it for you. Cool. That looks pretty good. Um, no, 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 wrong, wrong, wrong. I did this twice today. Take this out. Get in here. Yeah, just a lot of water. Not really anything else. Cool. Get that surface where the oil actually, or where the valve actually touches. That's the most important spot. Um, so the valve touches there, obviously, and then it also touches at this port. If the valve didn't seal over this port, then the air would just kind of go around in this, this valve core. So that is another spot the valve touches. I should have mentioned that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Just want to make sure you're not leaving like a bunch of lint and stuff from whatever rag you're using. Um, certain things like just paper napkins and stuff will leave a lot of um, detritus behind and that will not be super good for your valve. So let's pop this back. Put a bunch of oil in there. Oil in the open ports. Move it around. That looks good, just a little more, just for safety's sake. Notice how I'm, I'm dripping oil everywhere. It's getting everywhere. That's kind of just how this goes. Let's put some on this. Put some on the inside. 
and then let's put it together. So this one goes there together a little differently. You want to line everything up. I just put it in exactly right the first time, which is kind of weird. And this is sitting 